the search for new knowledge about our universe, our world, and ourselves. This monkey is an orphan, separated from his mother since the day of his birth. Literally, his life hangs by a thread, a soft cheesecloth pad that is his only companion, his only comfort. In the 1950s and 60s, Harry Harlow performed a series of experiments on rhesus macaque monkeys designed to test the effects of maternal deprivation on infants. Although many considered his experiments unusually cruel to the monkeys and therefore unethical, they served an important purpose to psychology and drastically changed the rules for how infants are raised today. Harlow, who was known to ignore more conventional terminology, called these experiments studies of love. Harlow had previously used rhesus macaques to test a variety of learning sets he had created. Since the best way to ensure regular access to infant primates was to raise them in his laboratory, Harlow created a nursery setting for the baby monkeys rather than allowing them to stay with their protective mothers. Harlow noticed that the monkeys raised in the nursery setting exhibited strange psychological behaviors not typical of monkeys raised with their mothers. This inspired Harlow to begin his experiments on maternal deprivation in the baby monkeys. Prior to Harlow's studies, it was believed that affection towards children would only spread disease and lead them to become spoiled in adulthood. This led to the development of sterile, contactless nurseries across the country. Additionally, the leading theory at the time was that the mother-child bond was based solely on feeding. Harlow sought to disprove this. So what are Harlow's experiments actually like? Harlow designs a set of ingenious experiments. He raises a baby monkey, allowing it to choose between two surrogate mothers, a wire mother that feeds it, and a cloth mother that doesn't. A cloth mother that Harlow thinks might provide something else, comfort and love. Here's baby 106, weaned on a wire mother. He's going to the wire mother. But this infant quickly runs to the cloth mother where he will stay for the next 18 hours cuddling. In Harlow's mind, choosing nurturing over sustenance. As seen in the video clip, Harlow would remove infant monkeys from their mothers and teach them to feed from either a wire surrogate mother or a cloth covered surrogate mother. However, Harlow found that even when the cloth mother offered no food for the baby, the monkeys would spend an overwhelming amount of time clinging to the cloth mother, only traveling to the wire one to nurse occasionally. This solidified Harlow's theory that infants require more from their mothers than just food. They require love and affection, something Harlow deemed contact comfort for the monkeys. Harlow also studied how the monkeys reacted with and without their surrogate mothers when introduced to a new place. The babies were introduced to a room filled with a variety of objects either without a surrogate mother, with the wire surrogate, or with the cloth surrogate. Without a surrogate mother in the room, the babies responded fearfully and refused to explore their surroundings. Even with the wire surrogate in the room, the babies largely ignored her. However, when the cloth mother was introduced to the room, the infants would run and cling to her, calming themselves with their comfort until they were ready to explore the room. Let's see exactly how Harlow did this. This is a six foot square room with a few toys and other objects, but to the monkey, it's much more menacing. We know that when our own children are taken to a strange place without their mothers, they are often overwhelmed with fear. This room is just such a new and strange environment for the baby monkeys. No mother is in there. Now, let's put a monkey into the room. Notice how cautiously he enters the room. He's searching for comfort, but nothing relieves his disturbance. Now we'll take the baby monkey out 
and put in a wire mother. Now, this one was nursed by a wire mother. That's right. All his life. She doesn't seem to help much. Now, we'll try the same test with a cloth mother in the room. You see the contrast in the behavior? Despite the fact that the wire mother nursed him, she could offer this infant nothing in the way of affection or security. But here the monkey, by rubbing against the cloth mother, as if he were seeking as much contact comfort as he could get, builds up his reservoir of affection and security. First his body relaxes as the fear disappears. But above and beyond this, new positive response patterns appear. He now goes out to explore and investigate this new strange world. He is now a normal, happy, curious baby. Harlow is also famous for his fear tests in which infants were presented with a terrifying machine. Harlow wanted to test if baby monkeys continued to run to the cloth surrogate mother for emotional support when in the presence of a fear stimulus. He found that, indeed, the monkeys would immediately run to the cloth mother for comfort until their fear was reduced. Some of the monkeys even gained courage from their cloth mothers, threatening and attacking the terrifying machine that had frightened them before. Fire personality. Look! Now he's actually threatening the diabolical object. Harlow's studies on maternal deprivation highlight the importance of contact and comfort for infants and small children. Without such contact, the baby monkeys grew up socially inept, with only a few making minimal recovery. The baby monkeys who grew up motherless exhibited deep psychological disturbances and patterns of behavior throughout their lives. They had trouble reproducing and neglected or even abused their offspring when they were able to reproduce. Harlow's monkeys helped psychologists realize that inadequate love and attention toward children can have long-term effects. His experiments changed the way we now approach child care in orphanages, adoption agencies, nurseries, and social service groups. Controversial as they were, Harlow's monkeys' experiments served an important purpose for how children are raised today and how developmental psychology courses are taught. Harry Harlow received the National Medal of Science in 1967 and the Gold Medal from the American Psychological Foundation in 1973 for his contributions to psychology.